Good evening, everybody. Um, hope you've had a good day. It is a matter of choice. Um, want to just uh, review a little bit uh, with what we talked about yesterday and then entertain any questions. Well, let's see. Let's entertain questions about anything first, just in case there's some other things that people need to put out there or, or, or make a comment about or ask a question about. Anybody? I need a little, this is for Mel. I need a little clarity, Miss Barbara, on something that was said yesterday. When Moses went up to the mountains, up Mount Sinai, you said it was Yah. You said it was Yahweh who was speaking to him, not Elohim. Yeah, I was uh, reading from um, uh, a, 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 a translation of the Torah, and the name used was the Y H W H. That's sometimes um, pronounced Jehovah as well. Okay. So if we are Elohim. That applies the also all, to the source of everything is I saw, or 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 or, or that the the limit the limitless one the, the 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 one that has no beginning no end, uh, the one that it was is, and will be. And okay. That's what that's what this was referencing to. I am that which was which is unlimited, has no end, has no beginning, uh, your Elohim. And Elohim was created by the Ein Sof. Okay, so each of the the people with Moses who had come through with Moses, they're Elohim too, right? But they're just unaware. They were unaware of who they are? Correct. Okay, got it. Um, we all what? we all have um, the personality that was given because uh, we are deliverers. We are rescuers as well. The aspect of angels of the light above all lights that rescues is um, Yahweh. That's why uh, Jesus' name. Is um, Yahweh, uh, Yeshua, and uh, he, because he's a rescuer, so is Joshua. But um, it's just an aspect of um, the light above all lights. And okay. Nobody could pronounce the name because of that. That's okay. Why. And those names are really just uh, attributes or descriptors. Of how the the light above all others uh, uh, manifests. Okay. Thank you. Are there any other questions, concerns, anything anybody been thinking about? It doesn't even have anything to necessarily do directly with the lesson, but that's okay because everything always <laughs> connects anyway. Any, any other comments? All right, then. Um, let, let's go back uh, just, just for a bit and just do a, a general overview, if you will, of um, what we were talking about yesterday. We were talking about the ten, com- the ten what's called the Ten Commandments, but they're really, the, they were, have, are called the ten utterances or the ten sayings or the guides, uh, all of those uh, um, by different um, uh, folk. Um, but what we said was that there were two tablets and the sayings um, one through five are on one tablet and they relate to uh, our relationship with um Elohim. And on the second set of tablets are those sayings that relate to our relationship with each, uh, among each other. 
And I think when you get through with this, you will see that there is no, really no difference between those sayings on either tablet. But depending on where we are in our thinking, um, uh, because we are at various levels, some of us are maybe functioning at the animalistic level and some of us at, at the human level. But depending on where we are or how those things manifest, um, uh, Elohim is not a materialistic physical presence. It's beyond that. And so we cannot relate to it um, based on physicality only. And so the things that relate to Elohim in the first tablet, much of it has to do with thought. The first couple, at least the first three of them, I believe, have to do with thought, then speech, then action. But if we're, if we're relating on an animalistic perspective, um, uh, in other words, we, we aren't even giving the thought of God any kind any kind of a, um, a place in our in our in our thinking, we might we might we might do those things on the left hand side on the I'm sorry not the left hand side on the second tablet uh, like murder, or steal, or kidnap or whatever because those things are very physical kinds of things that um, people who live out of physicality. Uh, can relate to because they are things that occur against the body itself. And when I'm living out of physicality, my body is what's important to me. My, the body that I have that I think is my body, that the physical part of, of who I am and what I am, I believe is important to me if I'm living out of the animalistic um, um, pers- perspective. And so anything that can harm my body or hurt my body or injure my body uh, has high precedence for me. So that's why you will see murder as um, the first uh, saying on the second tablet. Um, The utterances can be seen as um, a couple of things. They can be seen but one of which is a, a mechanism or a guide for spiritual awakening for us. In other words, you ask the question, Vermel, did are the people who were with uh, Moses, um, are they Elohim as well and just didn't know it? Um, oh, they, they, many of them are like we were, buried in, even before religion, when we, we didn't even have religion. <laughs> have religion, quote, unquote, and I did say that intentionally, have religion as, if, as, as an object that can be, uh, that, that, that we can hold and, and, and obtain and, and see and feel. Uh, there, are, there are idols that we also attended to that captured our attention, uh, that we dwelled on, um, as, as there are sometimes even now and we just know enough to know that, hey, I am not going to think about that. That's not who I am, blah, blah, blah. But we weren't always there. And so um, those commandments, once we really understand them, um, and, and even when we get through talking about them this time around, they're going to unveil themselves in even a different way when we discuss them again. Because that's the way truth is, and that's the way um, the 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 Torah is. The 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 the, uh, the first five books of the Bible are usually um, called the Torah from the Jewish perspective. But it, it it it's like a flower that continues to unfold and unveil truth. So uh, if if this is it's sort of like a spiritual awakening to us to remind us about who we are. That's what the commandments are, the things are, the utterances are. They're, they're telling us to, 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 to shake off, you know, awaken. If you sleep, wake up, wake up, shake, shake off your dreams of the illusion of separation from your creator and from each other. Um, just, just, just snap out of it. 
has passed time. So um, the utterances were designed uh, to do that. Um, any questions? Because I'm getting ready to go into the first one, the first uh, utterance. Comments? All righty. Let's move. The first utterance is... I am Yahweh, or Jehovah, your Elohim, who made you go out from the land of Mizraim, that's Egypt, from the house of servants. Another Elohim will not exist for you in my face. Another Elohim will not exist for you in my face. Let's say it a different way. I have to find it. Another way to say it is, I am your Lord who brought you out of Egypt from the place of slavery. Do not have any other gods before me. There's something interesting about these two verses together here. Um, the sages say that when these were spoken, God said them both at the same time with one utterance. Now, that sounds um, weird to us because that's, you know, we are, we are phys- we, 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 we're, we're, we're living in this, this physicality. And, you know, there's lots of duality in the physicality. But if, if and, e- and it is, the most high is one, then when it speaks, it's one as it speaks. Now, and as the giver, it's one as it speaks. But what we receive um, uh, uh, may, may be a little different in that we have to break it up. Um, we, we, don't, we, don't, we don't think in, in, in oneness uh, uh, in this realm. Um, um, some of what I, I am saying may be a little hard to um, uh, wrap your, 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 your resonance around. So, um, Pastor, if you can help me out, please feel free. Any of the other teachers or anyone who, you know, if something is just resonating in you that makes it clearer, please let us know. We're, we're all open to, be, to being taught today. Um, but 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 what was given was given uh, in one utterance. What was received was received as the two of them. The first verse: "I am the Lord, your God, who brought you out of the house, out of the house of slavery, out of the house of servants." And what Elohim was doing here is reminding them where they came from. Now, it did not go back and talk about uh, I am the creator of the universe. Because, again, I think I, I alluded to that a little bit yesterday by saying that these were a people who were, let's see, 10 generations, 10 generations. Oh, gosh, 300, 300 to 400 generations away from the creation. And they had been in Egypt for what, 430 years or so. And so the God, the Elohim that spoke to them, spoke to them uh, in, their, in their now of, of, of what they were experiencing. And that was what they experienced in Egypt. Um, they uh, were inundated with different gods in Egypt. Uh, they... Um, um, they saw the plagues, um, which, which uh, up until that time, it was as if there had been no spoken word from God until Moshe, uh, Moses uh, went to um, Egypt to say, okay, it's time to let people go, Pharaoh. And so they had not seen the miracles that they saw up until that time. 
They just went about their day-to-day lives, the drudgery, the whatever, making the bricks with no with straw and then with no straw, and and um, uh, 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 they were uh, uh, busy hearing the Egyptians around them talk about uh, which God did this and which God did that, and um, why the crops didn't make well this time. Well, then Moses shows up and says, okay, it's, it, uh, it's time, Pharaoh, to let them go. And that's when they begin to see miracles that they had not ever seen in their generation before. And those miracles started with the one after the other of the plagues uh, and what was done uh, to the Egyptians through the plagues, but which was uh, what was done uh, with them in terms of deliverance through each one of those plagues. So at the same time, they see the Egyptians and their many gods uh, being um, um, inundated with, with these plagues. They, they also um, were aware that it did not affect them in the same way. From the time um, of the, the, the frogs and the pestilence and, and even the firstborn when, when they had to put the blood over their doorposts and every firstborn in Egypt died including the firstborn of animals, yet they survived. That's what, that's what the Most High, that's what uh, uh, Elohim was talking about when he tried to set him itself, it tried to set itself as, okay, um, uh, this, is, this, is who, this is who I am. This is what I am. And it called itself a name. Uh, Go ahead, Pastor. Yeah, I want to speak to something <clears throat> recently. We talked about the um, exodus of um, the Hebrews from Egypt. Wonder why is it that the Creator just didn't take uh, Pharaoh out? Just let him die. Why did he put that kind of pressure on the ones who were enslaved? Any thoughts on that? Why? Could Any thoughts possibly... before I? Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was going to give uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, anyone on the phone the opportunity to address that if they had any thoughts about it first. This is Vermel. I do. I, I would, my, for me, my thought was he didn't want the people to come to him out of fear of what would happen, believing that that would happen to them if they were, if they didn't follow Moses. And I also think that um, it kind of makes me think of the lessons where we talked about purging and pruning, that maybe this was Pharaoh and his people's opportunity to purge and prune and change their perspective. That was kind of my thought. Anyone else? Thank you, Vermel. Um, This is Audrey. Um, To me... I feel like it was the creator's way of giving them an opportunity to understand and to know who he he is, who it is. Um, Sort of like whenever you you need to make a change, you're always sort of in a tight space and you got to make a decision one way or the other. So I think he was putting them kind of putting them in that tight space so that they could grow beyond it or evolve. Anyway, that's what I think. Okay. Uh, and also every single person was created in that image, whether they know it or not. And so I, I, the, the, uh, my, my thinking is that um, 
the Israelites were were set aside uh, sort of as an example. However, every single person, every single individual um, uh, ha- had that opportunity at some point in time uh, to to know who it was and and who it was connected to and who made it. But anyway, I'm rambling. So you go ahead, Pastor, answer your own question. <laughs> well, can I can I just interject something that I thought about? Um, yes, ma'am. Mary. I thought yes, about ma'am. Um, God's promise. And one of the things, and I can't remember exactly, but Jacob knew that they were going to be delivered and told them to take my bones with, I think, yeah. Wasn't Jacob? Anyway, told him to take my bones with you when you're being delivered. So God was fulfilling the promise that he had made to the Israelites, or to the Hebrews, I'm sorry, to the Hebrews. Just a thought. So why, so why didn't he kill Pharaoh, Mary? What, what, are your, what are your thoughts on that? Why did he just slay him? Well, I didn't think he, well, that wasn't part of his, uh, the plan. I think part of the plan is, like as you said, as y'all have said before, is that God wanted the people to trust him and know that he is a fulfiller killing. Um, well, he, he did eventually die, but that was not the way just to wipe him out was not part of his plan. I'm not quite sure about that. I just know that God was fulfilling a promise. So I don't know. They needed to leave Egypt, definitely. Okay. Okay. Pastor? I um, suppose that um, the reason had more to do with showing them who they are in contrast to the ones who had them in captivity and showing them by bringing them out without killing Pharaoh or the uh, army that he was um, showing them just because you know who you are, you have this power, you don't necessarily have to use it. What am I saying? Suppose this is a mirror. This is an example of the human seeking itself and not knowing where to find it. And the animalistic man doing everything he can to enrich himself and to manipulate and control those who are weaker than he is. Because if they saw what happened in terms of those miracles, that gave them an idea of who they are because they knew that they were created in the image of Elohim. Matter of fact, in the image of Yahweh Elohim. They knew that because they knew that before they went into Egypt. They knew their origin, but they had lost a sense of it. Think about it. When Abraham went to, to fight to uh, get Jacob, I mean, Lot free, he did not, the creator did not destroy anybody. Abraham had to do it himself. These people had to learn to trust someone who, 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 are, who are different than the uh, invisible external God that they have been taught about. Look at Moses. When God said to Moses, when they were re- when they were down there uh, rebelling, and um, Aaron was allowing it to happen, he said, "Go get your people." He did not say, "My people." So a- Abraham had become the God of those people. Prior to that, they didn't know the difference between the God of the church, which is Pharaoh. Of the God that created them, which is the deliverer. 
So he showed did them. You, Go ahead. Did you mean to say Abraham or Moses? No, when I say Abraham, went to get Lot. Yeah, okay, you're still on, okay. I thought you had moved on up to Pharaoh, okay. When, well, Pharaoh is an example of the church. And the people who were enslaved are an example of those who now are questioning everything. They were going about their daily duties. And they were, some of them were making an attempt to hold on to what they had learned previously about their God through the the, uh, stories that were told from Abraham all the way up to that present time when they were in captivity. So I see that as being no different than where we are currently. I see that Pharaoh has us in spiritual bondage as well as physical bondage. And I also see that rather than the Creator destroying the ones who are the enslavers, the Creator raised up those who would seek to understand who they are. And once they began to understand who they are, as did Moses, they began to move into the arena where the enslavers wield their power. And the, and the, and, and Egypt and the scriptures are an example of what I'm talking about. And in moving into those venues where they were wielding their power, it was not a physical move into those venues. It it is a spiritual move into those venues. It took the writing of the ten utterances to get the people to begin traveling a journey where they could see not only the God that they were worshiping, but they were that God as well. And they never really got to embrace that in a, in a major way because the priesthood became corrupt before they could do it. Moses, on the other hand, <clears throat> told them that they had to learn those ten utterances. Because those ten utterances were going to free them. Now, they were already out of Egypt. If you read it, the uh, ten utterances in Deuteronomy, it goes deeper into uh, the necessity of uh, them understanding, uh, uh, understanding and knowing those utterances. When the scripture says here, it's talking about hearing and acting on it at the same time, hearing and embracing it at the same time. So the idea of the doorpost was simply obedience. They would not have been obedient if they had not seen some miraculous things before So here we are. We are in the midst of preparing to leave Egypt, to leave the place of bondage. We are preparing to do that. And our creator is not doing it for us. And our creator is preparing, is showing us what must be done. Why? Because the Creator could not interfere in what's in this earth without permission from those humans who are in this earth. The reason they 
they did not hear anything is because there was no human in, in Egypt. The human was um, Moses' wife's daddy. Moses did not become human until after he left Egypt. We did not become human until after we left the church. Am, am I making sense or am I rambling? No, I hear what you're saying. Is it resonating? And and you mean religion as Yes. When I say church I mean religion. And the reason I use that term church is because I want to drive home what I'm saying. I'm, I have I'm not just talking about religion in a in a philosophical sense. I'm talking about religion in a very material sense. Pastor, I'm mulling over what you said. We didn't become human until after we left religion. Is yes. that what? How is that? We didn't even know what a human was. Okay. We okay. were we were abiding by the edicts of religion. We did everything the church told us to do. Um, there were people in the church who needed. And they didn't get. There were people in the church who were treated differently, and we didn't intervene. When the okay. wicked went after the poor, you did not intervene. Age of second song. So when it says that you would die as mere men, it's talking about you would die not even knowing that you are human. Mm. And we were in the throes of death without ever knowing the human. And now that we have begun to see that, it is time now to see the law, the the direction, the guidance that shows us how to remain human and how the human is supposed to respond. They did not know that in Egypt. They did not know that until they were in the wilderness. And please let me share this with you. Our wilderness was, the church was our Egypt. Our wilderness was when we began to break ties with it, but did not know what was next. When we began to to look at the scriptures for what they are are really saying, it is then that we were headed to Mount Sinai. We are now at Mount Sinai. Why do I say that? Because it is time for the true change to take place. It is time for the Hebrews to become a nation. It is time for the Hebrews to to do the warfare that they must do in order to bring an end to the mentality of the Egyptian that still exists. When those people died in the wilderness, that is speaking to the the um, the ideals of the religion that they had. Um, embrace dying in the wilderness. Think about it. They said, we want to go back to Egypt because they were tired of the manna. There are those who's on this phone right now who are struggling with that because they, they, they want the manna, but they don't know what it is, so they, they are rejecting it or they are vacillating about it, and their vacillation about it that is causing them to to uh, be weakened in the embracing of what humanity is or what humans are. When we look at these utterances we will see that they are not words. They are actions. They are char- 
characteristics of our makeup. They are showing us what it means to be Yahweh Elohim. They are showing us um, the personalities that we must be expressive of regardless of where we are. They are also showing us the danger in having one foot in and one foot out. And I saw that when Barbara said something about the um, the physical, uh, physical five as versus the spiritual five. The first thing, what I saw, Barbara, when you read the first one, was this. When you talked about not having another God, when you talked about idolatry, you cannot be committed to religion and not be in idolatry. You cannot embrace the sacredness of that communion table without being in idolatry. You cannot love that building more than you do the people without being in idolatry. And you cannot support idolatry and function effectively as the human. We are at the most critical stage of everything that we have learned. I promise you, not only is this critical, it's also dangerous. Dangerous in that you cannot play with this. You cannot have one foot in and one foot out. You have to be committed. When, when, when Barbara and Ed completes what they are teaching, we are going to be different humans. We are going to be different humans. We are going to begin seeing things and acting on things that we never dreamed of. And the danger is in, in playing with this, because when one foot in and one foot is out, then you are falsifying the name of the creator. And I'm not going any further than that because I know Bob is going to deal with that. Am I making sense, guys? Yes. Yes. When, they, when, when, they, when Moses said, um, when God told Moses they couldn't touch the mountain, don't come to this mountain. All he was saying was, don't come to this place of higher elevation or the, of higher understanding, of, of deeper enlightenment. Because when you enter this place and you're not sincere, you're going to die. You don't know enough about this yet to touch this mountain. Charles said the ground was shaking. It had to be, but they did not touch the mountain. The creator didn't show them anything when he was talking because he spoke from a dark cloud. We are at that place right now. The difference is that is not an individual Moses. It's a collective Moses. And that comes because of what Jesus did while he was in the earth. A collective Moses. Jesus said, Abraham longed to see my day. And I say, Jesus has waited, has been waiting to see our day. Waiting to see rise up and take on the battle that is necessary in order to free the people. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes, I have a question. Yes. Pastor Jay, so when meditating, 
we have to be sincere. Come, let me just say it. When we're meditating, I know we're to just be, but we need to come with sincerity and with a great intent. Um, is that the same as you saying God said we can't come up the mountain because we're not ready mentally? Ma'am, that's not what I'm saying. Okay. Med- you could meditate your fine. If you're not sincere, you just won't see anything. When, oh. when the understanding of the power that's inherent and what is on those tablets is taught. That inherent power that's in those words on that and that tablet rather is simply showing you how powerful you are. And, and and when you embrace that, you cannot play with it. You cannot support idolatry. And at the same time, lift up the name of Yahweh Elohim. You cannot lift up those characteristics because that means that you are it. That's how you express it. You can't do that. You put yourself in danger when you do that. Does that help you, Elvin? It does. You're saying we can't straddle the fence. Absolutely, but and I'm and I'm saying in no uncertain terms because I want us to understand that once these words go forth, there are going to be serious rewards or serious consequences. Jesus longed for this day. The energy of the Messiah has flowed into the people who are searching for themselves, and now they are becoming messianic. The idea of being messianic is more than just somebody putting some oil on you. Jesus was the anointed word because he lived and expressed what was in those commandments. Because men have begun to write stuff like in Deuteronomy where they're going to stone people. And Jesus said, no, 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 no. It is the Ten Commandments. It is the Ten Utterances. That's our focus. Understand the true translation of that. And, for, and now, here we are. The Creator has put an understanding in the womb of the feminine energy. And there is no doubt in my mind that the deliverance of that energy is going to embrace, I'm sorry, it's going to change us in such a way that we will be prepared for the seed of the eighth sense. Because without this, you cannot focus on on function like we are supposed to and like we need to as Elohim without understanding, without embracing, without eating from this tree of functionality. It's time to leave the tree of dysfunction. It's time for us to stop playing with things that are not functional. We are learning how to be dysfunctional as opposed to being functional. I mean, we have learned how to be dysfunctional. Now it's time to learn how to be functional. I did not intend to say this when I, when, I, when I started talking. But I know what I feel in my soul, that this is extraordinary, what we are about to receive. And it's not going to be just Barbara. It's going to be all of us raising questions, making comments so that we can get a clarity, get clarity about what is in this book, about what's on those tablets. Those tablets are for us. They are not for some program where you recite the Ten Commandments. 
They are for our life. Does that help you? What you're saying is resonating. Yes, sir. Is there anyone else? Because I'm done. If it's not. Hey, Rep. In the in on that in the second uh, verse of that twenty, when he said, "I am the Lord thy God," he was letting them know, whatever Lord you had to worship or try to worship, I'm I'm the man. Basically, but I, but I, I I don't want to get into an analysis of that because honestly, I do believe that. Um, in particular, Barbara and um, St. But I also believe that um, Kathy figures uh, figures into this also because of some of the questions she raised that pushed us to that point. So I'm saying to all of us, not just the teachers. I'm saying to all of us, be prepared to take a journey that's going to take you to a spiritual place that you never knew existed. I'm done. Okay. Anyone else right now? I I, I think um, Pastor hit it on the head when he said what we have gotten through uh, our religious upbringing is the rote. What's the first one? What's the second? What's the third one? What's the fourth? That kind of thing. And we listed them, uh, but it had no meaning. It had no personal meaning for us. Uh, but the the when 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 the creator of the universe, the creator of all that is, um, gave this to the people at Mount Sinai. The 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 voice and the essence of what it gave does not return to it void. And it was not simply for the people at Mount Sinai, but for every single individual uh, who hears, receives, and obeys and understands who they are. For every generation that is even unborn yet. And so it's 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 like it's a reverberation that if you if you if you heed this and if you take this and if you accept it as it's given, um, um, for my great 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 grandchildren that I will not see in this realm, it's equally as poignant and important for them that they have to have this imperative. They have to have this imperative of knowing um, knowing that Elohim exists. Believing it and knowing it, knowing it, uh, that there's only that one uh, um, entity that, that is the cause of everything being created. So if that, if that reverberates in us then, and we then understand that when it gave its utterances, its very essence is poured into those utterances. Just like when we were created, its essence is in us. We were created with one of the, one of the, um, with the hay of the Hebrew alphabet. Remember, everything is God spoke. And when God spoke, it, uh, things were. They, 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 they came into existence. That's the very nature, that's the fiber of what we were created with. And so when God, uh, Elohim, spoke, the reverberation and the resonance of what was said is the very thing that's in all of us, not just the people at Sanya. Because remember, Elohim is not bounded by geography, by space, by time, 
by anything. And so if the essence is, the very essence is part of the words that were given, uh, what was uh, as powerful then is still as powerful now for us. So and if you're thirsty for Elohim and uh, what the sages say is drink the waters of the Torah and become one with God. That's what it's all about. The, 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 the utterances are a way to remind us of our oneness with that which created us. So that's one of the reasons why it said, I am the Lord your God. I am Yahweh Elohim. That's my name. That's my signature. That's what I stand on. That's who I am as, a, as opposed to any other God that you knew in Egypt whatever their names were, it doesn't matter. Or any other God you will see in Canaan or any other country you're going to come to in the future that you, don't, you haven't even come against yet. <coughs> Excuse me. Just remember, I am that I am. And so it was, it was, it was the creator was simply saying, believe me, Know that I exist and trust me. So, a per, uh, you know, nowadays a person is known by its name, and its name is its character, is the person's character. And Yahweh Elohim um, was, uh, for the very first time in a sense, allowing the people to know what its character was because its character is the character of the people as well that receive it, that believe it, that accept it. And so another um, uh, translation says that There will another Elohim will not exist for you in my faith. In other words, Elohim is eternal. And in my face is in my presence. So while I am present with you and you with me, there is no other Elohim. There is no there is nothing else that will exist for you that even comes close to what I am and who I am and who you are and who I am, me personally. Nothing close will, will come close to, to who you are. And that was one of the things it was reminding the, the people as well and reminding us today. So we know that in my presence, means throughout eternity, which says to me, that's never, 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 ever, ever, never, ever. Nothing else will exist beyond and or above our creator. Now, in knowing this, I mean, it's the first great commandment, correct? And because it is the first commandment, it is probably an easily broken first. All we have to do is look at ourselves or look at the world today. Look what the focus is. And we can see that there are some folks that haven't acknowledged or even know that there is Elohim. And if they did, if they do acknowledge it, they don't pay attention to it. And if they don't pay attention to the Elohim that is, then how can they know the Elohim that they are? One thing uh, is directly connected to the other, is, the, is, is one with the other. And so once we understand that, that there is no higher power, no higher 
authority, uh, no higher deity, no higher anything than the most high, the Yahweh Elohim that created all. And we grasp that. Here's the next thing we need to understand. We are made in the very image and likeness of Elohim. Genesis 1, 26 through 27. We are the image. We're talking about there shall be no other gods. We're not talking about being gods. We, we, were, we were made Elohim and given dominion over this realm and unless we understand that and capture that and 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 that aspect of who we are um that's when uh kathy said a while ago you know if, if you call yourself anything other than the attributes of who elohim is um you're bearing false witness in a sense you're not being who you are because that's who we are uh, if you think about, well, I'm getting ahead of myself. I don't want to go there. Uh, let me stop and see if there are any questions. <clears throat> the human that does not understand the Elohim that it is, is dysfunctional. And it functions out of its animalistic attributes. Murder, rape, lying, stealing, um, go before the Supreme Court and, t- and swear and tell a lie. All of, all of that stuff we see happening around us, we know and we can see what functioning from the animalistic behavior aspect looks like. That, that individual who allows its ego consciousness to master it rather than vice versa. It doesn't understand the God that it is, and so it creates other gods, such as money, power, um, fame, sex, drugs, whatever. It creates other gods thinking that there is something that can take the place of who it is, because it doesn't know itself. Business, lust, anger, jealousy, our bodies, all of these, we're not just talking about animate things, inanimate things, we're talking about those things that, are, that have their, their fruition in our thoughts, like lust, like all of those things. So that's uh, that's the human who's functioning out of the animalistic uh, perspective and who is dysfunctional. Anything can be deified. Anything that we tend to raise above our thoughts about who we are and who our creator is, those things kind of um, cloud our vision. And those are the things that will not be tolerated. That's why it read, I am Yahweh Elohim. Another Um, Elohim will not exist for you in my face. Go ahead. Can I ask a question? Well, it's sort of a question comment. Um, So, um, just like the Egyptians came out of Egypt with a certain mindset um, that had been ingrained in them for 400 years, um, is can that be compared to like church doctrine? And is church doctrine idolatry? And the reason you I'm to asking those questions. Okay, so, because I, 
I kind of think about it like when um, they were at the mountain and the and the the creator's utterance was I think it's interesting that you say it was it was one thing and I'm still kind of wrapping my head around that but but the creator not only in in my in my thinking about it he not only speaks for you to hear he speaks to your inward parts um so that it reverberates within your inward parts i know there's some scripture about um that the creator speaks to the heart um but i think that utterance had to be not only physical, but inward too, and all one, because um, he had to remind them um, that they were created to be human and that no doctrine, no, no other God, no any other form of idol could take the place of itself and who he created them to be. Because it's almost like that, that idiom where you say you were struck to the core. It's kind of like that, I think. In that moment, they were struck to the core so that they heard, felt, experienced all at the same time. Um, who the creator was and who they could, they had the vision in the moment of who they were created to be, the human that they were created to be. We have anyway. numerous stuck to the core moments, if you will, because remember we said that we were created um, um, with letters with 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 the with the letters from the names of Yahweh. That 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 that's that's the that's the DNA in us, if you will, which which captures our attention when we when we hear truth, even if we don't acknowledge it and or even if we don't know what it is we are responding to that's what it is. That's the part of, 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 of the deity that we are. And, 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 and we've, we've allowed so many layers of so many different things, like what is doctrines, beliefs, uh, culture, all of that, um, so many veils uh, that have to be ripped, like the veil in the temple. It, all of those things have to be ripped so that we can see who we are and who we have always been, but just didn't realize it. Wow, yeah, we wrong. did realize it. We did okay, Rob, well, we did realize it on a on on a on a more basic spiritual level, but we didn't understand what we were realizing. Go ahead, Ron. I I uh, I, I, I sort of get the feel too of what kind of what Audrey said. Uh, so, something happened here, and, and I've been trying to look at this and, and see what happened. He, it, it almost sounds like there was an awakening here. Uh, he, he, it, I am the Lord. I, it, it almost sounds like an introduction. You have been, you just experienced something, and I am who or the part of you that is responsible for what you just experienced. Because he says two things here. He says, I brought you out of the land of Egypt. I brought you out of this consciousness that you were in. Uh, this, this, this place that you were in that uh, did not lead to enlightenment, that, that, that made you cry out, that was uncomfortable to you. And there's more to Egypt that I don't see yet. I've been trying to look that up, and I don't quite see that yet. 
and the house of slavery, when you look that up, is is talking about uh, a cultivator and, and someone who tills the land. So you are, if you are the human, as pastor said, it is your responsibility to till the land. It is your responsibility to cultivate. In other words, uh, to to bring about awareness and to show people who they are and, and, and be enlightened. So you have been doing this to no avail because you cannot see uh, who you are. You have been in a, a bound up place. So this this feels like some type of an awakening or, as Audrey put it, kind of struck them to the core. It, it, it just sounds like something happened. And, 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 and Elohim is saying to them, this is where you are. You don't, don't be confused by this. Don't, don't let this wilderness uh, experience frighten you. This is where you are and you are with me. And and uh, it's just it's just and as I say, there, there's so much in those just those two verses that uh, I, I I don't see it yet, at least not clearly. But uh, I guess if we still keep talking about it. it it'll it, it'll come. But well, you, you said what I felt like too when I when when I first started earlier. I said, oh, wake 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 up. You you you've been asleep. Wake up, um, you know. Shake yeah. off this uh this this, this lie, this illusion uh, that you, that you thought you were in, the illusion of who you thought you were. Now, right here now, I'm gonna tell you. Let's. I'm gonna tell you who you really are. So, and, and that same thing, that voice, that those words are the same words uh, for each of us. Who, who, who has to know who we are too, who has to be reminded, if you will, of, of who we are. Um, they, um, they, yeah. The attribute of Yahweh Elohim, they did not hear what we are hearing. When the utterance said, the utterance was, I am the Lord, your God, who brought you out of Egypt. They didn't hear that. They heard, I am, I am Yahweh Elohim. What they heard in that are the attributes of Yahweh Elohim. They heard about rescuing. They heard creator. They heard protector. When, when he said that, I am, I am the one who is rescuing you. I rescued you from Egypt. I, I, I created you. And I am your provider. I'm your protector. That's what they heard. So it's much deeper than just saying, I am the Lord God or I am Yahweh Elohim. It's having an understanding of those words so we can understand what the Hebrew heart heard as opposed to just what the English words we are accustomed to. Thank you. Agreed. I, I, I agree with you. I, it, it, the 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 verbiage that we use when the creator spoke and 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 with one utterance all of this was said then yeah the receiver at that time knew that it was everything that i thought i lacked i did not lack i do not lack the creator provides everything is is my savior is my protector uh, nurtures me even though it had shown smatterings of the physical portion of part of what it had the ability and the power to do i.e. feeding them um, so that they were not hungry while they all of those were just minimal little physical kinds of things of a greater and a deeper um, um provision um, made for the people. I'm your healer. I'm your keeper. I'm your, I'm your rescuer. I am all that you need as you need it, when you need it, how you need it, however you need it, 
for whatever you need it for. Uh, it, 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 you're, you're so right. It, it's so much deeper. Yeah. And, and, and the reason why that, 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 that resonates so deeply is because remember they had been crying for 400 years. They had been looking for something for 400 years. So I am what you have, you have been searching for. I am what your heart has been looking for. So yeah, that, that, we we only see the words sometimes, and and we can't. We we have trouble transforming transferring the 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 feelings and emotion and 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 the meaning out of it, but it's saying so much more than than the words on the page. Yeah, I've been mm-hmm. trying to figure out exactly uh, how to, how to say it. Um, and like you said, Miss Barbara, it's not the idea of actually um, just believing uh, this is a transformation and experience of actually uh, knowing it deep down to your uh, soul uh, and actually uh, experiencing that at the moment. So it's something that transcends beyond just uh, the thinking. There is um, a, a confidence uh, that, that the person hearing those words is understanding at that particular time. Um, when it talks about uh, freeing them from, uh, from bondage or, or slavery, it is bringing them out of that uh, a closed mindset of once uh, of where they uh, used to be. So there is uh, an awakening and a revealing uh, that is going on through this entire process of, you know, to themselves. It's not just some authority saying, hey, I run this. I'm the leader. That's not what is uh, taking uh, place. Uh, well, it's yeah, that's not what, what what this is actually capturing in the moment, like uh, what Pastor said, in terms of what those people are actually hearing and experiencing at the moment. Well, you know, Sheldon, that's, that's, that's a good point. And um, just, just sitting here trying to think how to process it, too. And then if we just think back five, ten minutes ago, what Rev said about us moving forward on our journey, a lot of it comes is like almost like a syllabus being presented to you, and it's almost like, hey, you accept this or you don't. And God is speaking to him, saying, you, you know, moving forward, are you going to accept this? So just think about how we felt five, ten minutes ago. It's much easier for us to accept it because the journey we've been on thus far, and so on their journey, he's, he's taking them through another gate. And, and, and they, they've got to accept moving forward. He's presenting everything to them. Even though it's unknown, they still have to accept moving forward on the journey. <clears throat> yeah, and, and, and they can't just, or I know at least for myself many, many, many years ago, just accept this as, uh, as rules. If you only accept this as uh, rules, then... The, the entire process of, uh, of what is supposed to be going on that never actually uh, happens. This goes far uh, beyond that. I think too. They are, it's a way only, of life. I think to add to that, not only did they hear the creator, um, did they hear all the attributes of the creator? I think they also heard you are the human I created, and I didn't create you to be a, a, an enslaved animal. So they also had to reckon with that too, I believe. Well, they, they heard, when, you hear, when they heard Elohim, they, they heard so much, they heard that my, my my characteristics are in you. You are who I am. Right. All of that in that word. You are, and you are, I am your deliverer. You are your deliverer. I put this in you, that kind of thing. Uh, that's why I, I believe that it is, it's taken us much longer on the journey because we cannot just take the words that face value written on the page. We are being taught now to do something that we just started talking about. Hearing with the heart of the Hebrew. Hearing 
with the heart of the Hebrew means that we are hearing far beyond what we are reading, if that makes any sense. Um, for example, George brought up a, a, a verse, Hear, O Lord, the, the Lord our God, one Lord. And he, when he said that, I, I looked at some things, and that verse is talking about him, him that we that we are the same. Hear, O Israel, the Lord That's the Yahweh shame. is one Yahweh. The, the they are the same, and He's saying to Israel, hear and act on this. What does that mean? Hear and act on this. Meaning that act like who you were created to be. Not church people. Act like who you were created to be. You were created to be rescuers of those who don't know who they are. You were created um, to to be the the um, spit image of, of um, your creator. You were you were brought here to create an environment uh, where, where where people can live in harmony. In other, we are here to create the earth because the earth now is in disarray. Our purpose is to create the earth, and if the earth is not created, man does not live. The earth was created before the human was put in the earth. Does that make sense? Yes. Genesis 26 again, guys. And Elohim said, we will make a human in our image, like our likeness. Yes. And what he will do, rule over the fish of the sea, blah, 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 the beast of the sea, and verse 27, and Elohim shaped the human and its image, in the image of Elohim, he shaped it, male and female, he shaped them. Elohim said, we will make a human in our image, like our likeness. And uh, we're getting a little ahead, but there's no need to have idols. We are the image. We are that image. We are that living image. There's no need to make anything inanimate or otherwise, we are the image created, placed here to have dominion and to subdue and to be and do what the creator expected us to do. And that's not to make other gods and to put other things in between us and, and the creator. We are directly connected to the creator. So there is no need for an intermediary, an intermediate kind of thing. We are one with the creator. We are one with Elohim because we were made in its image and in its likeness. Um, I'm going to go on to the next verse because we're talking about these two verses, these two together, um, talking about um, uh, don't don't uh, do not make any carved st statue or image or likeness of what is in the heavens above, the earth below, or or between have the waters under the earth. And what that's saying is, um, what the the Hebrew word cell is translated graven image or carved image. Often it's translated that way. And it refers to some three-dimensional uh, image to represent the divine. And Tamuna is uh, translated uh, likeness. And it's generally uh, referring to some kind of symbolic representation of the divine. Uh, and it can include astrological de deities like the sun and the moon and the stars, all those things. So, but, but what Elohim said to us that day 
is that we are the image. Why are we gonna make something that? Why are we gonna make a false image of something that we are the image of already? The the, the very essence of the Creator is in us. We have that creativity. We have the desire and the intent of the creator. And so there is absolutely nothing that can take its place, which we are. There's nothing that can take our place. Um, one, one, other, one writer wrote it this way. In the, uh, one writer uh, said it this way, in other words. I am the eternal divine whom you experience in yourself. I led you out of the land of Egypt, that cramped space, that consciousness of ignorance where you could not experience me. You shall not put other gods before my face or in my presence. Why would we do that? Why why would we separate ourselves from the creator with other things? That's what this is saying. You shall not do that. We are one with the creator. We are that image represented in this earth realm. There is no other. There is no other that can carry the light of the creator but this vessel we call human. We are that treasure. We are that, we are that, 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 that what is that? The, the buried treasure, that treasure in, in, in the human, in, in the human vessel. So, you know, we, we've been talking about this, but until we, until we can resonate with this, everything else comes out of this. Everything, all the other utterances uh, are, are, are attached to this. But until we get this into our um, um, being and, and, and understand this relationship, um, I'm not going to say until we do, as we get this into our being, then everything else flows from it. Yes. And it flows on a different level because we take it, we, 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 we move with the power of what that says. And we move. Go ahead, Pastor. Mm. So sight. <laughs> we lose sight of who we are. Mm-hmm. It, when you have an a, a idol, that idol takes all your focus. When, when I know when I was passing, my focus was not clear because there was the communion table. And that never was holy to me, but it was a distraction. And when we lend our energy to an idol, to a building, to the, the, the wooden uh, stuff, the material that. stuff that we call holy, then we relegate ourselves to being unholy. See, when we say that this communion table is dedicated to God, well, who are we dedicated to? We, we give it more power. We give it power that it doesn't have. And as long as our focus is on the table, is on the building, is on the name of the church, I am a member of whatever, as long as we focus on that, we are in competition. And not only that, we are only members of a church. That's it. We are members of a club. We are members. It's no different than being a member of a fraternity. We are not spiritual at all because all of our spirituality is focused in material things. 
the suit that you wear, the dress that you wear to serve communion, the gloves you put, all that is ritual that has usurped the image that we are from us and blinded us to the real us. If we don't lend ourselves to those images, it makes it easier to understand when it says, you will have no other God in my presence. You will be, you will not have another God in my presence. Why? Because you are the God in my presence. And anything that you bring into your presence, you bring it into mine. Does that make sense? Certainly does. I was thinking in other words, uh, I guess a star quote in, uh, you shall not hold anything uh, as being more superiorly sacred than yourself. Exactly. Yes, Amen. 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 Oh, no. To, 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 uh, to, to idolize something puts boundaries around it, puts our own finite animalistic boundaries around it. But we are Elohim, and so there are no, but we are expansive. There's nothing, there is, as a matter of fact, nothing with boundaries can, can, can even live up to, to what we are capable of. That's what it's saying. Um, and you know, there are idols uh, that are engraved in us in our, in, our, in our minds, too. Anything that we venerate and we lift up and we, 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 we revere, like uh, even people, the Pope, how many people revere the Pope uh, to, to such an extent that they don't know who they are? Or the preacher, how many revere the preacher? Such, anything like that, whether it's um, uh, a preacher or a prophet, um, if we lift them up in our thoughts to a prominent place that is above and beyond the deity that we are, then we are worshiping idols. I, I, uh, I remember I had, I had a Rolex watch, and I, and I cared too much about it. And when I realized that I cared too much about it and that it was becoming who I am as opposed to an object on my arm, I gave it away because I could not focus on understanding the scriptures while at the same time having an idol on my arm that I revered and did not realize I revered it until I stopped and gave thought to it. I paid some attention to it. So the question becomes, what do you revere to the extent that you are not even aware of it? Search yourself and find what you revere. And when you find it, ask yourself, what am I going to do with it? What am I going to do about it? Because as long as that reverence is there, you cannot function properly. You have to change your affection for it or your, your relationship with it so you won't be dysfunctional. Thank you. And you just said another word, relationship. Created in that image, there's relationship there. There's oneness there. It's, it, it's similar to a marriage that, that the two become one. There's a relationship there. And when I create an, an image or an idol, that, that, that puts something um, into that mix of that relationship uh, that's, that's unwarranted, that's that, that creates infidelity uh, between uh, uh, me and, and, my, and my creator. That, 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 that makes me think that we are separate when we really aren't. Whatever comes between me and the creator that gives me the impression that where is God when I need him? Something's wrong with that. I am the God who has the authority in this realm 
given by Elohim, the creator. The human is made the crown of earth's creation by what it perceives in itself. If I see myself as the crown in this, in this realm, that's, that's, that's because that's what I am. No other image can express that. No other image can bear that essence. No other image has that power. No other image has that force of the one true God. It can't be symbolized in any image from mineral, from plant, from animal king, none of that. Any of that served would be a lesser God. So you are the image of this divine essence that's been exalted in this realm. You will not recognize any higher gods, anything that presents itself that is below the divine in you. You cannot worship, you cannot bow down to anything that presents itself because everything is below the divine in you. So, I mean, there it is, folks. That's something for us to meditate on if, if we need to. Um, but, um, I, I mean, I'm feeling jittery. And when I feel jittery, it's just so resonating with me so much I can't even stop moving. Um, um, are there any questions? I'm not going to go... Uh, we need to we need to meditate on 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 verses one and two to if we haven't if we haven't gotten it let's let's uh, let's come back tomorrow till we get it because this 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 is who we are. Barbara, when you said yes. you felt jittery, thank you because I was going to ask you because of the way I'm feeling because it resonates with me and I see how. Uh, being in the church all my life, uh, the songs, all those stuff I put up, and, um, you know, it just, what you're saying just resonate with me so it's kind of like me got to get this Egypt stuff out of me where I've been in bondage for so long, and it has to come out of me and recognize who I am. So thank you so much because this jittery is here, and I said, okay, I know this is something that I'm going to have to meditate on, but thank you for the lesson today. Thank you. But allow that jitterness, that resonance yep. to resonate with creation. Because, because resonance is good if you're resonating at the level that 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 you are as Elohim. They're not necessarily talking about it, but they're talking about it. Like, no, you are. I don't think nobody talks about it. Anything else tonight? Kevin, is that you? Yep. Anything? Oh, okay. Any other comments tonight? Oh, guys, I can't. I can't stay still. <laughs> I um, uh, I I agree. I've been walking ever since we've been talking about this. However, I do believe that we should stay here. On these two verses, no matter how long it takes, until we become one with the understanding. Because without that, there's no point in moving forward. As you said, everything hinges on those verses. Everything. Agreed. Thank you. Well, if nothing else comes up, well, let's start with these 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 verses on uh, Saturday at ten a.m. Yes, ma'am. You guys have a great evening. Oh, thank you guys for your input. For great evening. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank, thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Richard was even on.